I mean, after that, ten people. Um, so, I'm happy. <laughs> so, thanks for coming. Sorry about the big crowd. So it makes it not feel legit. That's okay. Um, so, basically, I went to China for seven weeks this spring. Um, and what this slide shows about is the progression of um, going to a foreign country with a very uh, one-sided need or desire. I went there just to kayak, nothing else. And uh, what I took away is actually kind of interesting. <coughs> um, yeah, it kind of blows my mind when you got it. Um, so I originally went to climb, actually. And so real quickly, I'm going to describe how I went from climbing to kayaking. I didn't time this, but I think it, it's not going to take very long. So I went from that to this. And I'm about to explain how. Um, so I saw this picture and decided I wanted to climb in China on a motorcycle and I was going to film it. But just me, that's kind of weird. <laughs> so I spoke to Alejandro and he's in, which is less weird. So now it's Alejandro and I climbing in China on motorcycles. We're going to film it. But then we think, wait, filming? Well, Alejandro and I climb? <laughs> Nah, we want a professional. We want a professional. Sorry, I got some delay. <clears throat> um, so we think, hmm, oh yeah, Brian, he's perfect. <clears throat> so one month later, oh no, Alejandro can't come. So now it's Brian and I climbing in China. Brian has a climb. He kayaks, I kayak, let's go kayaking. So that's how we got to here. It was, um, really haphazard, it like wasn't planned, um, which is kind of cool, because I went to kayak, originally to climb, and now my heart has totally been stolen by China. Um, and so it's just funny how you go through life, doing whatever you're doing, and all of a sudden you end up head over heels in love with this country and you know things about. Um, so I'm looking down the internet at this point uh, for pictures for kayaking and stuff for rivers. Um, and Basically, I saw like that one and this one, and I decided I was totally committed. Like I was excited. It doesn't take much. Like literally, <laughs> this is what I was spending all this money over. Um, and this. So this is called a travertine waterfall formation. Has anyone heard of it before? All of this. Kind of this. Yes. Travertine up there. Um, so. What happens is, uh, in China, we have one of the largest karst formations uh, present in the world. So karst formation is uplifted limestone, right? Um, what happens is the limestone is soft, the water dissolves it, the water becomes heavy, and it deposits the uh, minerals onto a gradient, um, a steep river, and these waterfalls actually grow. They're pretty cool. This is the Agua Azul in Mexico. Um, it's a huge tourist attraction just because of the river alone, but also because um, you can send grandpas off these things for kayaking. Like, you can flop off this, it's totally safe, everyone loves it. And so I'm thinking, I want to go to China, this is in China, I want to find these things, I want to find a river that I can send grandpas off and I'll take their money. And that was my idea. Um, so, oh, I'm pretty sure, check this out. So that's you now. Um, this area, we got a lot of karst formations, kind of on the uh, eastern side of Yunnan, into Guangzhou, probably over there. Um, so that's where we headed into the capital right there, Kunming. Um, this is Yunnan. You've got, uh, you guys might have heard these rooms before, the yellow, the Yangtze, the Mekong, and the Salween. Uh, they're massive, they're huge. Thompson doesn't even compare. They're, uh, they're incredibly large. So this is Yunnan, we're zooming in. You got the Yangtze, the Mekong, and the Sali. And right there is the Great Bend of the Yangtze. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So we flew to Kunming, and we were, we're hitting up this area. This is where uh, I think the gold mine is. I see the rainbow literally landing over there. <clears throat> so we landed in Hong Kong, uh, talked to some random dude, and put your kayaks in the back of his van. Um, Oh, we skipped it. Oh, weird. Something happened to the slide. Anyways, 
Uh, this is my first and last trip ever uh, kayaking without a car of my own. It's terrible. I'm trying to convince this guy to put the kayaks in the back of his taxi like that. It's uh, literally, it's like an all-day affair. Um, and you really have a hard time sleeping, uh, then you always have to bring them inside. It's a big pain in the butt. Um, so I was like, oh, well, I'm going to buy a car in China. Um, I mean, if, you know, I'm an American. Like, I always have to drive, right? Like, that's the stereotype. So this is what I ran across. You can't buy a car and drive in China unless you have a local license, local license. So forget this idea. I didn't write that stuff on top of Everyone's like, you can't drive in China. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So Brian and I decided we would uh, give ourselves a week to complete this mission. Um, <laughs> and that's how I did it. We gave him lots of money. Um, yeah, so you can drive in China. Uh, this is this is us doing the, the deal. It's cool. You sign your name, stamp your thumb over, and then you're good to go. We um, we're signing it on the back bench of the van. We actually traded the back seat of the van for a rack and blackout tinting because we were afraid that if they saw us more as they pulled us over, which they did. So there's our little Julian. Uh, it's called a Mian Voucher, a little bread loaf. It's actually what they call them. It's an endearing name. Uh, it handles about as good as a bread loaf would. The, the, there's our blackout tinting. We were terribly afraid of police officers. We even hit our kayaks. Uh, we got a little more okay about it. Um, so this is the cockpit of our vehicle. <coughs> um, standard day. Uh, it was terrifying, actually. Um, your legs, your legs are like right here, up against the front. If you even so much as tap a tree, you're losing them. Uh, um, Brian's a terrible driver. This was the only pullout I saw my entire time. Um, it's really scary because when you have problems, you can't pull over. Everyone has problems. I don't, I don't know what they do. They just uh, hang out the road, and uh, or you can veer off the road and hit cliffs. Uh, this was an everyday occurrence. It was actually a Pretty terrifying experience driving in China. Um, I felt fine when I was driving, but I was a little nervous when Brad was driving. <laughs> Vice versa, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but so, one day we're descending this pass. We had just left Kuming. We we're super stoked, high in life. We bought our car, everyone told us we couldn't. Uh, we're going down this pass, and uh, you can imagine us in our little bread loaf. It weaves, it floats, it's, it's scary. And um, Brian's driving. And so we're going down, he looks in the rear mirror, and I literally hear him go, just like that. And I'm over here sitting, and I look in my side of the mirror, and there's this massive semi. And it is barreling down upon us. Like, not that semi, but exact same uh, shape, size, feel, everything. Coming down, and um, so I'm like, Brian, put the gas on, what are you doing? And so, he puts the gas on, and he comes out of his state of shock, he puts the gas on, and our car's like, and it's not picking up any speed, and the semi is still barely down us. I'm looking back, and I'm like seeing this thing about to eat us, and then it croons over to the ditch, and just explodes. The bumper goes flying, the windshield's cracking, it's like, it's like flames and glory, and so the ditch, and we're like, and then it backs off and slows down. And I felt like uh, the Millennium Falcon like, coming out of the um, Death Star or whatever. It was crazy. We barely survived. <laughs> and, and so Brian was just total state of shock. He pulls over as soon as we could, as soon as like a side road. And he stops. He's like, Whew. he's like, dude, did you see the driver? And I was like, no, dude, I didn't see the driver. I saw the truck. The truck and all this hit The driver, what was the driver doing? He's like, he's like, the driver opened up his door and jumped out. <laughs> doing like 60 kilometers an hour. The guy jumps out of the truck, hits like ass first, like total white water safety position, goes hur, hur, and then it starts like catapulting down the road and just gets eaten alive. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> so in a, in a very big nutshell, that's why I was afraid to drive in China. Um, and then if you have a problem, here's your safety truck that sends you into the valley. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we headed out east, all of us in our minds, um, broke down immediately. That was a very uh, continuous uh, tradition for our trip, always an ending Julian. Um, so this is what we were after. We were after this waterfall and a succession of a couple others on this one river. Um, 
Connor Sport Trotter team again, and um, it was a challenge. There were signs pointing to it. We followed the signs for three days, multiple signs. We are searching for this waterfall forever. We end up in the wrong valley completely. This is, <laughs> you can keep, that's a, that's a white show. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, the pictures are much better than me, you want to see me. Um, so, <laughs> you have some music? <laughs> um, so we ended up in the completely wrong valley. The sign is literally pointing to this point. It'd be like us being in Whistler when I'm trying to be in Revelstoke. That was the distance. Um, so that was frustrating. So we're headed east. Um, we started to get some of our uplifted limestone. And we get to a large river, which is sweet. This was the wrong river. This was, this was the Whistler when we were trying to get around the Stoke River. Um, we realized finally. But it's super dry. The picture I showed you is right here. I'll go back, check it out. Bam, it's supposed to be floating. This is like super dead. Um, we ended up coming out here like a 40 year drought. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so that's no good. Um, we finally find our, our waterfall attraction is a beautiful parking lot. It's kind of cool. Um, and it looks like this. <laughs> this is like this is like week two, you no know, kayaking, kind of lots of hardships. This is the waterfall I just showed you. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, I don't know what she's doing. I just I like this because I feel like she's pushing like boys, you need to be over there. I don't know the water is. That was our tour guide. She's latched on. We didn't ask for it, but she was nice. Um, so Brian decides to shower. Uh, that's like the entire river right there. Um, they put us in these clothes. We literally had nothing to do with that. <laughs> uh, so we leave the parking lot. Uh, we decide we ain't got enough here yet. So you're out over here. Um, and so we go back to Hippokuming, Dali, Lijian. We're headed to Lijian. <clears throat> it's much different terrain. It's mountainous. It's snow melts. It has water. We knew it had water, but it doesn't have car formation. So we're like, whatever. We'll throw those plans away. Obviously not going to happen. Um, and we spoke. So this is going through Dali right here. Um, pretty cool area. This is some kayaking that should be done there. It's like one we didn't get to this. We tried, but we didn't have time. It's a big granite range. Pretty sweet. So we go back to that one. Uh, so this is Li Zhang. This is in the traditional, so it's a Nashi town, a minority Nashi. Um, the Han have since come in now and they've basically made a spectacle of the Nashi culture. Uh, it's how the non believe they used to live, so they like to kind of pump it up. Hang on, yeah, so it's all Disneyfied basically. It's, it's a big tourist attraction, but they like to say that they're helping the Nashi. They're really not. Um, this is what the town actually looks like. Let's see. So we met up with Travis Wynn. He started uh, Last Descent, a nonprofit company I'll talk more about in a little bit. Um, I believe in 2006 uh, with Kristen McDonald. Um, so they started Last Descent with Naming Hui. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and so here it is. It's a nonprofit dedicated to raising awareness about China's rivers and also encouraging recreational activities on the rivers in China. Um, and everything else that you would imagine is encompassed in that. And then Travis and Kristen also started China Rivers Project, which is um, <clears throat> it's really similar as well. It, it says right there, uh, Mission China Rivers Project is to protect China's rivers heritage for people, wildlife, and to foster river-based recreation in China. Um, Kristen's really involved with Rivers Project. Ch uh, Travis is really involved with uh, Last Sense. They get across over a lot. But um, this was in 2007. They're, they're both made because there's a lot of people in China. There's a lot of rivers. But those two things don't communicate. Like The people don't understand how cool the rivers are. Um, and so they're trying to raise the awareness. I'll get more about them a little later. But we know Travis. So it's pretty cool. He sent us to this uh, big water section on the Yangtze, it was ridiculous. Three, th sorry, 30,000 CFS is this uh, section. Um, you 